Welcome to this eGrow research video investigating coleus pH. So what is the optimal substrate pH to grow coleus? The substrate pH affects the availability of plant nutrients. The wider the band, the more available a particular nutrient is. When you look at the pH being too low, then you can have an excess toxicity occurring, especially for iron, manganese, and boron. If the pH is too high at the other end of the spectrum, the most likely candidate is an iron deficiency because it's tied up by the substrate and not available to the plants. So therefore, what is the sweet spot for growing coleus? To look at this, we had a research project that used six inch pots. The substrate was an 80% peat and 20% perlite mixture. We had wetting agent in it, and also the limestone and hydrated lime rates increased to achieve pH levels of 4.4, 4.7, 5.3, 6.37, and 7.8. And we fertilized the plants with a neutral 17417 CalMag fertilizer at 150 part per million end. We used three cultivars, Big Blonde, Inferno, and Oxford Street, and we grew the plants for seven weeks and then collected data, which included plant height, plant diameter, shoot dry weight, and a combined growth index. So what did we find? We found that plant height, diameter, and growth index were highest between pHs 5.3 and 7.0. Shoot dry weight was the greatest between 5.3 and 6.3. Therefore, we're recommending a pH between 5.3 and 6.3 as being more optimal. Growth was less when the pHs were below 4.7 or higher than 7.0. You can see the growth of the different plants for Big Blonde, Inferno, and Oxford Street in this illustration. The results indicate that coleus are not micronutrient accumulators at low substrate pHs because we didn't see any visual symptoms on any of the leaves. The only thing that occurred was that growth was negatively affected. When the pH was too high, we also had less growth. Now, in some cases, we did see some intervenal chlorosis occurring at those higher substrate pHs. So therefore, our recommendations are to grow coleus between 5.3 and 6.3. This is slightly wider than what's recommended in the Ball Red Book by now of 5.6 to 6.0. We would like to thank the project supporters, specifically the breeders who supplied cuttings for the experiments, and also the inputs that came from various companies. This project was a combined efforts of NC State University, University of Kentucky, the North Carolina Department of Agriculture, and also funding came from the American Floral Endowment.